What is good? We're back. Got our guy, Big Co. Got to hit some more actual dynasty trade questions. Love dynasty dun, trades. Dun, dun. Love dynasty trades. Love some dynasty trades. Keep them coming. Let's go. We're going to get into it. We got some couple Patreon questions, couple of YouTube questions, an email, an Instagram question. Uh, so, you know, pull them in from every direction. Keep them coming. Most detail that you can give us, the better is a better answer. Better, you know, we can really get in the details and really give you the best answer possible. Straight screenshots. Right. Screenshot me, team, screenshot links, draft picks, link me that, links. Link me that link me that team, dog. Info, baby. Info. Give me an info about how the league what what they value, you know. Some, Love it. Some people are like Oh yeah. You know, our home league still, you know, the running back still holds a little more weight than anybody who's on Twitter, you know. Right. So yeah. True, true. Sometimes values are placed on different things in different leagues. No doubt. You know, got a you, guy that if you've been it for long enough, you know what it is. Got our buddy in our home league that thinks that that thinks he knows everything and gave away uh C D Lamb for um what's his name on the Titans last year? Straight up. One for one swap. Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry. That's terrible trade. Terrible trade. And he's he's swarping down it was a good trade. He he loved his trade. He gave away Derek gave away C D Lamb for Derrick Henry. He did win the league. No he did not. Tough, Tough. one. Yeah, isn't that, isn't that who traded? He got Tuff got C D Lamb. Lamb. Oh, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Jason, super, yeah they, they, Jason did not win the league. He yes. gave away C D Lamb for a, a you know a, that is correct <laughs> for your. He gave away a second round startup pick for a six to eighth round startup pick. Like just like just what you just said. Right, home league guys, not necessarily in the. Not, not listening to us. No, not listening to the small potatoes guys. Right, who right. Some good info and really sure. diving in there. They're listening to the, the top end, you know, the big dummies, mm-hmm. <laughs> the big dogs. Some of those guys are really smart. Um, not to throw shade, but <laughs> if you're if you are not uh, subscribed, you know, go ahead and like, subscribe, comment below, uh, all that jazz. Because you know, if you want these questions answered, you better at least be subscribed and like no it some shit. No if doubt. not running over to patreon and then you know we'll get our we're doing a live patreon show tomorrow where we send you the stream yard link and you can you know you can come in and actually chat with us and uh really interact on the uh, topics that we're talking about i like it i'm uh, a so fan of that try to do that once a month so all right let's get it rolling first question is a is a patreon question the one one or the one two and garrett wilson so the one one or the one two and garrett wilson okay um so you're your information here is it's half PPR. Correct. Which definitely leans back towards Bijan, but it's super flex. So basically you just went from, you gave away Bijan and then you go back to just one, you back up one spot to one, two, you get your choice of the quarterbacks and you get Garrett Wilson. Half PPR brings the value back to the running backs, but it's super flex and brings the value back to the quarterbacks. And to me, I that's a that's a really good return. And we were talking about this, and it came there was a phrase that came out of it. It's seller beware. Okay. Mm-hmm. The seller, a lot of t- the phrase you hear is buyer beware for this or buyer beware beware for that. Sure. Well, seller beware, if you're moving away from Bijan, especially in half point, which makes the running backs that much more valuable. And you can start four running backs in this league. And yeah, two running backs and two flexes. You can have you can have four running backs and in a half PPR, the more running backs the better. But you know, the seller beware, you get rid of Bijan, you could be getting rid of an absolute monster. You are getting rid of, my, of an absolute monster who we just haven't seen play NFL football yet. Mm-hmm. But that return, in my opinion, is a very, very strong return. You bring in a top 10 dynasty wide receiver who's 22 years old, and then you just move on to the next quarterback who is sometimes picked right beside Bijan in a startup. You know, the value, yeah, yeah, the yeah. value difference in a, in a rookie draft, one, one to one, two is pretty decent, pretty strong jump. You in a startup, everything's side by side, right? It's all about those counting those blocks. Well, <laughs> you don't you don't pay as much. You know, you, the the pick obviously the first quarterback taken, first rookie quarterback taken in a startup will vary from round to round. Sure. Um, and you know, but there's there's just you're gonna go. You got your Richardson, and you got your the other two guys that are just people are in love with, and 
pick your poison, but you don't have to pick. You got one, two, you could trade back from there too. You know? So I just, to me, I think it's a solid trade. Um, and I would have no problem. That would be a really good scenario for, I would have to say, and Hey, I got no problem with you trading away Bijan for that's what you got. You got Garrett Wilson and you just went to the first quarterback in right. a super flex league and you got whichever quarterback you want, or you could trade back or you could trade back again. You know, you yeah. could probably get a haul to go from two, two, from one, two to two, one, four and yeah. stay in a quarterback range. There's no chance you're not getting a quarterback at one, four. His you might not have the pick. His quarterback, your pick of them, Mac Jones and Geno Smith. So he needs a quarterback there. And I was running backs for Dobbins. ETN Walker um, and Elijah Mitchell, and then he would be adding Bijan to that room if he made the pick. So he's got a great stable of running backs there, right? That he you know makes 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 it kind of fun. And then the wide receivers are young and, and not necessarily proven. And Pickens, Tony, Sky Moore, Mooney, Christian Watson, Mechie, and then the tight ends are Pitts, Likely, and McBride. So a nice nice group of tight ends there that I like. But none no nobody out there that right now is producing like like you want them to necessarily. Agreed. Um, and then young wide receivers who there's some a lot of fun there, but not a ton of actual promise heading into the year. And the quarterbacks are you know fine. You want you would like a little something better. You want one better than one of those guys most likely. Um, right. You know, the way I like to play it, I'd like to have one better than those guys, and then I'm fine with those guys, you know, being my twos and threes. So, yes, it, the, the, I don't think you're going to get much more value for Bijan necessarily because that's really good value, and you can double down or triple down, um, and it fits needs for his team. Like, he's not like... Correct. If he puts Bijan, he's starting a nice set of four running backs, but shit happens throughout the season, injuries, all that kind of stuff. And you're, you're just, you got some holes yet that you're not quite right. ready. So, I mean, you could certainly, like you said, seller beware, you could certainly take Bijan and be okay with it. And then, so his thoughts were he might take Bijan and then try to play to be basically maybe then trade Bijan in the next draft to try to get the one, one basically. Mm -hmm. So his thoughts were take Bijan. Hopefully the, he solidifies basically being the RB one, through one season and then saying, Hey, I need to flip this guy and, and, and maybe try to get Caleb Williams as the, you know, yeah. I mean, what are your thoughts? So on in this, I said, Garrett Wilson, top 10 in this latest mock we did, he just went as the eighth receiver with Tyreek Hill in front of him. So you got your aging wide receiver, mm -hmm. you know, the other, the, the first six were the, you know, your Justin Jefferson, J Jamar Chase, CeeDee Lamb, A.J. Brown, St. Brown, and Waddle, so the younger guys. Mm -hmm. And then then Tyreek Hill at number seven, and then Garrett Wilson as number eight. So, you know, you could easily have seen Garrett Wilson go before Tyreek Hill. as sure. a, You know, so Garrett Wilson, top seven, top eight, top nine, you know, in a, in a startup draft, had an older receiver jump in there in front of him in that one. Um, it just, you know, I like everything you just said. The, the, the thing about it is if you you might give up on that, if if you were gonna if if you're gonna make a quarterback pick at one two if you made the trade you put Garrett Wilson on your team you back to the one two and let's say hey I'm gonna take Richardson or I'll you know my guy is this you know I want this guy Ohio State or I want the Bama guy if you wanted that one of those guys for sure and let's say they came out and played lights out all of a sudden in a super flex startup draft they're still same value as Bijan. You know, you might not be able to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. If, if Richardson comes out and takes the world by storm. Well, Richardson would probably be the only one that would necessarily maybe jump ahead of some court, some you see, stalwart. So you, you, not, you just, not that Bijan couldn't come out and average 27 points a game yeah, and be and unattainable. It and, you know, that he'd still be Bijan's going to be a back of the end first round startup pick this No time matter what. Next he's year. He's already that. He's already a back of the first round startup right. pick. He's. He's you rarely see him get past 112 now. And he had yeah. him, you know, so in Superflex, he's not, you know, he's probably the one, 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 two, one, three. I said last week, I mean, I'm, I would take Justin Jefferson first over any running back. And, but in half PPR, I would take Bijan. Mm -hmm. And I would take, I would take Bijan half PPR over Justin Jefferson. Full PPR, I'm taking Justin Jefferson. Um, but that we're talking about the difference in one, 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 two of a startup in a, in a one quarterback league. Yeah. So I, I just feel like, I feel like that's a pretty solid return. I, I'm, again, we've yeah, said it, but we said we said it a month ago. You're not gonna. That's the point, though. That's the point right there. You, I don't know if you that. I don't know if you don't take the trade if it's gonna get better because if the quarterbacks hit, you know, 
You could go, you could trade back for the one two, pick up Garrett Wilson and trade back. You don't even have to make. You could trade back and rebuild your whole team. You could keep trading back. You could get right. a player and a pick every time. You could go from one two to one four and grab another player if you wanted to, or a pick next year. Might not get a full first round pick to go from two to four. Yeah. But if you wanted to play that game and go and and fall out of those first three quarterbacks and you say, hey, I'm gonna go from one two. You can pick your poison, whichever quarterback you want. Find the worst team in the league. Get their first round pick next year. That could easily be Caleb Williams, right? You know, or put you in, and, well, and, and you have your own potentially. You know, so if you if you could somehow pull that off and get Caleb Williams and taking Bijan here, then you know Caleb Williams' value off the rip is going to be insane. So basically, right at Bijan, I I may, maybe even more probably in the super flex. probably more in the superflex. The thing um, about the superflex when you go half PPR like that, yes, it may, it brings back up the running backs and it dig, it bring it dings down the wide receivers, but it just solidifies the value of the quarterback when it's mm-hmm. half PPR and superflex because the quarterbacks are now really carrying your team. Quarterbacks carry your team in superflex, but if it's full PPR, you have the position of the wide receivers, you know that can kind of balance out your roster. And if you really want to be a dominant team, you have to have that lightning in the bottle running back. And if you have, if you have Kelsey or, you know, Hawkinson post trade, you know, that if you have that, so, but the quarterbacks, you go half PPR and the quarterbacks being super flex, it brings half PPR brings down everybody, but the quarterback, Yeah, you know, everybody just lost points. The wide receivers lose more. Derek Henry doesn't lose a lot. But most running backs, the top end running backs, lose a lot because McCaffrey's catches just got cut in half. Mm-hmm. You know, Kamara's yeah. catches, those types of guys cut. You know, so it's the only person that doesn't get hurt by that rule is the quarterback. <laughs> sure. You know, sure. Um, it, it's I guess where I was going was that it's just really hard to predict the future. No uh, doubt to say that. Oh, that's, for sure. And I think JMW said that in the, in the Discord talking about this trade. Uh, you know, which is you know if you could pull that off that would be great i think that would be you know i'd be fine with that if he said hey that's my plan i'm taking Bijan." and he did say that the running back pull value, it off if you could pull, if he it could off. pull off taking Bijan here not taking that trade and then being able to basically leverage Bijan for caleb williams next year and just him stinking again having a good pick yeah and you know then selling Bijan for you know what could potentially be a top three quarterback re- relatively really soon well uh, uh, but I'm, you can't it's really hard to predict that that actually happens he did say that running backs do hold more value in this to the league than of course everybody else yeah so so the last thing here is like you know as far you can't predict the future of course if you trade away Bijan and it's half ppr and you have your first round pick next year you've just dramatically increased your chances of being bad yeah this year not not garrett wilson's a stud and he especially roger when rogers gets over there garrett wilson could actually you know could be out there out there murdering sure. you know could be killing but take away that stud top end running back off of a half ppr you're 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 winning less you know which yeah. could help your first round pick and so therefore you keep going you got you got garrett wilson you got the one two if you keep trading back or you take the one two make a quarterback play I said it like you just if you get one of those rookie quarterbacks, they likely don't help you win a whole lot. They could be really good for a rookie. You know, you get out, got to get out those air quotes for a rookie. He did good, but for but he was probably you could be for a rookie. You could be good, but you could be quarterback 20, 21, 22, 20, sure. you know, points per game wise. And you got those bumps and bruises along the way. Those bad games for a rookie, but you give them a pass because they're a rookie. You know, right. you just take the highlights and say, hey, yeah, man, this dude's a, this dude's going to be great in two years. Well, meanwhile, he didn't help you win. Bijan could be helping you win, therefore reducing your draft stock next year. Sure, and hurting your Caleb Williams, especially chances. with that running back room that you already have. Exactly, so, exactly. I mean, maybe maybe the, the the play would probably be if you're gonna if you're gonna not, you probably need to start turning over some of that running back room to to try to get some more better receivers pairing up of running back with one of those receivers and trying to go up in status of a receiver or just get more picks for next year to just try to you know replenish you gotta you gotta build this team out a little bit more yeah he didn't have much what, what was this he didn't have good quarterbacks right gino and mac jones which i like both of those guys not not awful but none of them's gonna win the week for you yeah i mean yeah that's a whole nother discussion but all right let's let's keep it moving I like off it. that one and we'll go to some uh youtube questions here uh, we'll start with the first one that I sent over in the group of four here. Uh, 12 team Superflex Dynasty PPR. I acquire Kyler Murray, Brandon Ayuk, and the 3 2 for Dak, Pittman, and the 3 9. I see this is a good buy low for Kyler, and my other QBs are Herbert and Rodgers. 
So I get, I acquire Kyler, Brandon Ayuk in the three two for Dak Pittman in the three nine. Jay Wayne Correct. weighs in. Say, I like what Jay Wayne's response was. Um, you know, he said he's got Herbert and Rogers for quarterback. You you brought in a little bit more volatility with Kyler Murray than than Prescott. The the thing about it is you traded for Pittman. The, the, you might not be able to get this trade after the draft because if Ayuk gets traded to somewhere and all of a sudden he's out of the Niners, run first, spread out, got Debo, got Christian McCaffrey, got Kittle, you know, if, no matter what, even if Brock Purdy's in there, Ayuk wasn't like – Ayuk's not going to be a twelve target per game guy. There's 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 only five of those in the league, and Ayuk's not going to be one of them. But Ayuk in the draft could get traded somewhere, and all of a sudden be a team's like number one. He is their number one receiver. <laughs> you know, he's he's their number one receiver, but so is you know Christian McCaffrey, and Debo McCaffrey and, and Debo split and Kittle. You know, they they have yeah. like four number one receivers, and yeah, the way I mean, their offense works is awesome for their offense. But it's like it just keeps Kittle's Ayuk is like the odd man out. Is he's still doing? He's still making plays, but like you know, the, the touchdowns are going to be gotten by Kittle and McCaffrey and Debo. Well, yeah, and those guys are so good. And the that's way what they, I'm saying. They're the absolute they scheme studs. for them. Is yeah, yeah, great. yeah. Ayuk right. is awesome, and it's not a slight on. But he's Ayuk. not on their level, right? right. They're just talking about how good the other guys are. He just does something different than those guys do. He operates differently. He's, he's an actual wide team. receiver, right, right? And he's awesome. He separates. He's a fantastic that's separator. what i'm saying he's a really good wide receiver they that team just doesn't need what really so, good wide receiver so are you to, to matriculate the ball down the field they you, don't have to have are you that. giving the nod to Pittman or i Kurt, Pitt, you got it right now you got to give it to Pittman. Pittman sure. had Pittman had a quad and Pittman, what the the tweet was his 99 catches last year yeah with with a quarterback that just fell off the rails you know Pitt, like Pittman. I'm on the team Pittman strong by. Um, I have, you know, I have no problem with the giving Dak and getting Kyler. I've Dak is safer, but I've been doing some quarterback digging, right? I've been <laughs> doing a little quarterback digging. Yeah. And if there's one guy that I've been really, I haven't been throwing shade, but I haven't given any props to and definitely taking every chance I can to say I'm down on him. It's Ky- it was Kyler Murray. It's been I've been I've been down on him for body language s sure. problems all off season long. Hate but, the and, attitude. But let me so let me cherry pick the the game that he got hurt. He scored point six six points because he got hurt like the first play of the game, right? Yeah. So you take that game out of his points per game for the year. Guess where he is? Top six. Oh, he's awesome. Right. That that as bad as it is. And so, and the only reason he's, t- and he's top six, because I, I put the cart before the horse here, you take away the Lamar injury season, the game where he got hurt and he's the fifth. Yeah. So Lamar, cause if you take Lamar, Lamar's game where he got hurt and he's got 21.3 points per game, Kyler's got 20 points per game. If you take out the game where he got hurt and that's number six on the list behind Hertz, Allen, Mahomes, Burrow. Right. So, and Lamar. So the tops is, is, that is as ugly as the Cardinals offense looked those first games before he got hurt was mostly with no Hopkins the offense looked terrible a huge letdown from the week with the season before they started out what seven and oh not t- t- like they were this season the wheels fell off yeah top six before oh, yeah. before he got hurt is as ugly of football as you could see out of the team maybe I mean you get it's for me it's, not, it's no contest Kyler over Dak for me, the 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 Dak doesn't have the ceiling that Kyler has. It's not even close. No. Right now in their careers, going forward as a dynasty asset, the floor is much more stable for Dak. And you could say that, hey, we're we're worried now that Cliff Kingsbury isn't there. Like, I don't give a fuck that Cliff Kingsbury isn't there. That Cliff shit was not working. Kingsbury there was some didn't help anybody. And I'm not saying it was Cliff's fault. And I'm, I'm, it seems like maybe it was a little bit more Kyler's fault for being a little baby bitch. But, <laughs> exactly. But that's why I've been I don't, hating I don't, on I don't, him. I've been, I do too. But like, I still recognize how good he is at fantasy, and I don't know what the hell's going on in there. So you know, it, it could be that maybe maybe homeboy did stink and didn't listen to anything that Kyler 
you know, any input that he had and was just like, oh, we're going to do what I want to do. My point exactly. But yeah. and you could say, oh, well, they're not going to run this air raid offense anymore. So they it's weren't like, air raid nothing anyway. It. Right. That they, offense was broken. Bro. Nobody was getting raided. Yeah. Nobody no, raided anything. No, they no, raided. Absolutely not. They There might have been like a three game stretch where somebody got raided. Now, but that Kyler, was like two years ago. Kyler may miss a little bit of the season here because we don't know right. what the injury thing is, which is whatever. But, but who cares? It's Kyler over that for me. And and it's Pittman over Ayuk. Yes. Um, and I, I think it's... He swapped 3-2. He got he gave the 3-9, got back 3-2. So that's all, that's good. That's fun. Whatever. Um, I, if Brandon Ayuk gets traded, I'd, I've, I'm not a fan of going from Ayuk to Pittman. Or from Pittman to Ayuk. I'd much rather have Pittman. But if Ayuk can go get a place where he could get those types of p- targets, that's a really good trade for you. Mm-hmm. You know, you already went up from... Like, Again, I'm probably taking Dak in a startup over Kyler because I feel uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have volatility somewhere else. But that is such a this will this will come back up in other questions. That the Kyler Murray buy low window is completely wide open. Oh, for sure, it's so open you could step through it. It's gotta a window. It. Gotta get it. You could step through it. You don't even have to crawl through it. So I, I, that's, I mean, this time last year when we were scared of. You know, we're talking about there's six quarterbacks in the beginning of this draft. Well, Kyler was one of those six last year right. this time, and he can easily be back there. He just has to play. He has to stay healthy for a season, and the fan, he'll be up right back up at fantasy per game, points per game, you know. It's not called. Five quarterback or whatever. It's not so. called buy low, sell high for nothing. It, this is low for Kyler. Yeah. It's low for Lamar, and it's low for Deshaun. I'm about to get into all this. You got this is it's it's buy low sell high is that's the mantra for a reason yeah and you don't and I'll take the Kyler side and I'll I'll take the it stinks that you gotta that you gotta de- I don't want to get off Pittman right as much as the next guy that's, but hey to me, that's I'm, the I'm, hardest part of the I'm trade get Ayuk and then I don't know we don't have the rest of his team information yeah. here but yeah. if you if you're competitive and you need to do something and get another receiver then you can do that take. Mm-hmm figure out a way i don't know what other things you have but like you can you can do that it stinks to get lose Pittman, but i you know in a season i could be scoring and be more effective than Pittman if it just it could be i don't think the Niners are gonna have have money to pay him anyway and this is his last year there so yeah a lot would have to happen he's gonna go somewhere and get a chance at a nice second half of a a career here i i I hope so he's awesome so i'll take it okay but yeah, it's to me. To me, <laughs> it, I, it's lateral. To, to it's semi-lateral to me too. But I'd rather have the ceiling of Kyler. I think he's a, just a better dynasty. The Kyler side is the upside. He, he'll side. win you weeks. Yeah, no doubt, no um, doubt. All right, let's let's keep moving to the next next uh, question. We're next go question. Trey's, Trey's question here: the big purple T, big purple T. Trey, gotcha. All right, I have Lamar, Hurts, Daniel Jones. Good three quarterbacks: Lamar Jackson, Dan, uh, Hurts, and Daniel Jones. Should I try and trade Daniel Jones to add some skill position depth, or hang on in case of injury? Twelve man dynasty super flex tight end premium, and he's got he lists most of his team here, which I could list out real quick. But I'm sure, if you're not watching, it'd be a little more difficult. It's Hurts, Barkley, Pollard, DK, Amari Cooper, Dalvin, Madison, Ingram. Lamar, so that would seem like his starting lineup the way he framed that, right? Yep. So you got Hertz and Lamar starting quarterbacks, Barkley and Pollard for running backs, DK and Amari Cooper for your top two wide receivers. Mm-hmm. Right now he's got Madison and Dalvin in there for his flexes, which you know, and it, mostly because Kamara's in some legal troubles or he's exactly. in there. <laughs> yeah, you can. Ma- yeah, with no legal troubles, you're showing Dalvin and the Kamara in there, and then uh, Madison would be on the bench, which would be solid. Yeah, that Amari Cooper, Dalvin, Ingram, uh, Kamara is nice. You know, twenty seventeen lineup. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. Um, I like it. And then he's got Ingram for a tight end. And he's got Sammy Darnold on the bench. Sure. Like that right now. Uh, Minshew on the bench who, you know, things can happen. It, it, he could be starting it for the Colts by week eight or week two. Kamara, like you said, Spiller, Lazard, Hodgins, Gabe Davis, Nico, Ertz, and Joku in tight end premiums. A solid couple. That's nice. And Brock Wright. Uh, so got a decent little bench. Um Nobody's really jumping out on the bench, but some solid little depth there. Nico Collins, high upside young player that people still like. Gabe Davis, still very startable, even though people put the cold water on him after last year. And Lazard just got a blessing. Lazard goes back to his homeboy. And Hodgins could be a nice starter, potentially. 
you would hope that uh, the Giants could bring in somebody else in addition to what they've brought in already. But right now it looks like Hodgins would be starting on the outside for the Giants, and he did nothing but um, impress as sure. uh, off the street, unsigned, undrafted free agent. I don't really have any receivers like him, man. That's Right. That's what I'm saying. He's basically the only big guy they right. got. Um, even Slayton that plays outside and can play very well on the outside is yep. not a big dude. Um, so a good, a solid team missing a little bit of a uh, sparkle, um, you know, missing a little sparkle here and there, but his quarterbacks are super sparkly, mm-hmm. super sparkly. Um, so the question is, should I trade away Daniel Jones to add some skill position depth? Yes and no, that there's no, there's no two ways about it. Yes and no. If when the right trade comes around, it may be right now to a Giants fan in your league, you might not have a Giants fan. You might not have a guy who needs quarterbacks so bad they want to pay through the nose. At some point in the near future, somebody in your league, if you have those three quarterbacks on one team, that's super solid. And sure. so I already know that one team doesn't have good quarterbacks because that's the rule of the 12-man league super flex. There's no chance everybody's fine. Mm-hmm. And you got those three guys on one team. That means another team struggling because you just took three starters that are pretty good. You got three top ten guys right there, bang, bang, bang. So there's another team to struggling. So you, you know, just by law of what's going on, and right. then if something crazy happens with San Fran and all of a sudden Sammy Darnold is starting in a couple of weeks, when I say a couple of weeks, so we just imagine that we're talking about week one here. If something crazy goes on, Brock Purdy's elbow is not right. He might not come back till week 12. Let's just say I'm making this up hypothetical. Build my narrative around Sam Darnold. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden the Trey Lance experiment comes off the rails or he's traded away because yeah. they like what they see out of Sam Darnold. They know Brock, Brock Purdy can be their guy. And the doctors have said, hey, his elbow, we put it back together. It's going to be fine. Don't worry about it. And now Trey Lance gets traded. Sam Darnold becomes the back to backup, you know, and then all of a sudden he's starting because Brock Purdy's not there yet. You could have a a quad fre- a quad fecta or whatever I just tried to say, you know, a like quad fecta, a quad fecta. I don't think that's a word, but I pray. Yeah. I definitely made it up. Cause I didn't know how to say it while I was saying it. Kamara's pending charges here. Got a situation going on, but he, he makes your lineup look a lot better. If he was up there, Daniel Jones is going to get you some pretty good stuff in Superflex right now. The question is, do you trade, you know, to me, I can't, I'm not trading Hertz. Hertz is like a league winner right now. The points per game that he's getting, I can't trade Hertz. I I mean, I could trade anybody, but I can't trade Hertz. It's got to be, you got to blow me away to get Hertz. You could, right now is not the time to trade away Lamar. No. Now is not necessarily the time to trade away Daniel Jones because what happened last year with minimal weapons. You can only think they got to go up. Just like you said last week, the Giants paid him. Yeah. They paid him. It's not like he had to go somewhere else to a franchise that had nothing. Right. And they had to pay like the Jags did a couple years last year just to get anybody to come their way. Sure. You know, the Giants, who know Daniel Jones, just gave him $120 million for three years. That's something. Yeah. I mean, I I think, you know, I think you said that when we were just reviewing these before we started. I mean, I I don't think you trade. I don't think you do anything right now. You got to see where this team goes. You got to see if your other guys are going to perform. You can you can be in, right in the mix with this squad, or you could be in a couple of weeks looking around like, damn, I'm a little old, uh, right. and I'm not. I'm, I'm kind of right in the middle of the pack. And then you know, then it's like, all right, well, is is Barkley perform? Are you are you there? And you just need another player or two, and then you can move off of Daniel Jones because uh, you know I think he'll be fine. Right. Uh, uh, Value wise, if this is like this twelve team, there's another two question coming up. This fourteen, Barkley so just, and Pollard could go. Barkley and Pollard could be crushing for you. Right. That's you what know? I'm saying. Or they so, could be, you could be tearing down and they got to go. If you're, if you're Trey, if I'm Trey right now and I'm looking at this and I'm saying, hey, here's my team, Casey and Corey done talked about it. Here's what I'm thinking. Like, if that's me, I'm looking to try to get something off of Nico Collins. You know, you got, I'm trying to just, I'm trying to turn some guys off the, on, on my bench into draft capital if I can. I'm trying to find a Nico Collins lover. Nobody's an Alan Lazard lover right now. Nobody's going to give anything for Kamara. But, you know, and Gabe Davis, if you can get out of the draft without the Bills getting a, play, a wide receiver that you really know, Gabe Davis coming right back around and he could be in your starting lineup. What you really need to have happen is Dalvin to get traded. So I'm Alexander Madison's the starter, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, you, you know, you, you're, you're kind of in the middle here of saying, hey, my team could compete. And your your equity on this team is stacked up in your quarterbacks for sure. So it's a really good question. Should I trade? 
yes and no. Now's not the time to do that. Yeah, that's what I. You would. know, because uh, unless you gotta you're see where you're going, right? Me. You kind of need to see what's happening. And I mean, there's really Daniel Jones can, is really his stock can only really going to go up. So you might want to turn Daniel Jones into two different things. You might what you're trading for right now is depth to try to win, but I mean, there might be something more enticing with somebody who wants to feels like they're going to win now and would like to offload maybe somebody a little younger with a little more value, but isn't doing exactly what this person wants them to do. Right. Cause the heart of your, like you said, I mean, the heart of your lineup, what you had Barkley and Dalvin and Kamara, I mean, you, you were crushing a couple years ago, but Mm -hmm. if you, if you did, if you could have gotten Barkley and Dalvin healthy at the same time, you probably were rolling cats, but you know, Lamar's young ish. Hertz is still very young. Daniel Jones is young. You know, and I we don't talk anything about your actual trade about your draft picks. Um, uh, did you ask him? You asked him about his draft pick situation. Did he get back to you? Um, I don't think so. Okay. Um, you know, so I'm holding the quarterbacks you got right now with an eye. Just look. Just just keep the temperature of the room in the league. You know, pay attention. Talk to the guy who needs quarterbacks the worst. That's what you. That's what you need to do. D, text it's a home league text or dm some people if whatever what like you know what kind of league it is what kind of relationships you have go ahead and, and touch base with the guys who need quarterbacks the, the most and and touch base with the guy who probably has the worst team in the league and he could have the best two quarterbacks but his whole team sucks like touch base with those guys that's going to have really good draft picks next year you know and depending on how you come up with the draft pick you know that kind of stuff um if you got if worst team gets the first draft pick then you want to be talking to that guy yeah um and see what you need to be you know maybe your team starts out struggling and you're not doing what you want to do and all maybe you're moving barkley maybe you're moving pollard maybe you're moving maybe lamar jackson starts out red hot somewhere maybe you get a haul that's what i'm saying it it could be where you're moving a lot of this team Mm -hmm. like maybe maybe hertz is now movable like if if things start going a different way and you do sell off burke Barkley and and Pollard and you know and Daniel Jones maybe you ship all those guys off and maybe now it is maybe you do sell Hurts because you might you might be out of it for two years or so and maybe you don't want the volatility of Hurts on your team I'm not saying that that's not what you need to do right but um, but would would Dalvin and Kamara and Barkley be in three sevenths of your top best guys yeah your your and Amari Amari, right right and so you only DK is your only proven good young receiver right um and but you, you're stacked up with quarterbacks and you're stacked up with running backs if you can get out of legal trouble and your uh, dalvin can play you know he says his shoulder's strong and healthy so yeah he, i think you you could really be contending very easily and you could also look really old in six weeks of the season right nice so i think you got to do like william wallace and hold <laughs> hold hold all right um we got one more youtube question it is uh, from Tony. He says, Daniel Jones, Cousins, Aaron Jones, and Olave for the 1-2 two, and 2-3. Two, Which side are you on? I'm, I don't. I'm on the Daniel Jones, Aaron Jones, Cousins, Olave side. So, and he said, so he goes on to say, I have the pick. He says, my quarterbacks are Trevor Lawrence and Jimmy G and Trey Lance. Right. So, last year before the season started, Trey Lance and Trevor Lawrence looked like a really nice mm-hmm. young duo and Jimmy G pulling up the rear. Now Jimmy G's a paid starter. There's no chance he's not starting. Um, maybe just for one year if the Raiders go and get a stud quarterback and maybe just for half a season because that's how money goes these days in the NFL. Everybody's got it. Um, let's see. It, it Trading away the one-two and getting back Daniel Jones and Cut. Kirk Cousins and Alave. Right. It's hard to pass up on that. And Aaron Jones. I mean, Aaron Jones is no slouch. There's no doubt about it. In season. I mean, obviously it's not as fun without Aaron Rodgers, but in season, Aaron Jones can have some value for somebody. Oh, hundred percent. Now could have some value for you. If you make the trade, what you get to do with this trade. I know one, two is great. And we don't know exactly know who it's going to be. You could take Anthony Richardson with that one. And I wouldn't be upset with it, but you can get Daniel Jones, you can get Olave, and you can hang on to Olave or trade him, and then you can immediately trade one of or wait until somebody's desperate and, and trade Daniel Jones and or Kirk Cousins to somebody else and or hold one and trade the other one and trade away Trey Lance if you wanted to. And you could be you could just get so much more liquid with what this trade offers you, and you get to just hang on to Olave, a young piece, while you're maybe developing the rest of your, your squad around it. He's got London and Pittman and Pickens. A wide receiver, he says he's got bad running backs except for Jacobs and, and 
you know, and Gibson, which I like Gibson, just hold Gibson for a minute. Sure. Value will come back around. Somebody will need him in season two. Um, so he has super young wide receiver, you know, London and Pickens right. and Pittman's at wide receiver, which is a nice little stable. Um, Jacobs isn't going to get any younger, though, so you're probably going to need to trade him early in the season when he's crushing if your team didn't do anything. But if you go, if you pick up Daniel Jones and, and DJ and Kirk Cousins, and you have Kirk Cousins, uh, or, uh, um, oh, I said it twice. So you got Daniel Jones and Cousins, so you got two starting quarterbacks right there, and you got Trevor Lawrence, like you said. You the the phrase you you get very liquid you get you get if you have multiple and quarterbacks you're very not to liquid. say you're, you can tr- you could trade away two more quarterbacks you can probably finagle another quarterback back you can and trade quarterbacks anytime if you have quarterbacks to trade away you can make a trade anytime you want to right. with superflex like you, the the word liquid that you use there is very accurate for this situation the thing is yes if you what your when you line up the boxes from a super from a startup the one two that first quarterback taken might not be the one you want at one, two, but the first quarterback taken in a startup is going to be higher than all the other boxes for Daniel Jones and cousins and Jones and Alave. Alave is not going to be too far behind it. Right behind that is going to be Daniel Jones in another round and right behind that, or maybe in the same round if somebody gets a little crazy is cousins. Mm-hmm. And then a couple of lines back a couple of rounds later, will be Aaron Jones in the 10th, which is t- super great value. The thing about it is, as I said it a while back, the one, two, whichever quarterback you pick, it could be a bust. Like that's the you're taking the bottom side out of this deal for you. If when by getting Daniel Jones and Cousins, you completely. And oh, by the way, you got Olave. And oh, yeah, right, right, <laughs> and the two three in a super flex, right? So you completely take away the bust factor because Daniel Jones isn't going to be a bust. Well, he's given the two three up in the deal too, right? Oh, you give the two three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, right, right. So you're giving away the two three, but yeah. So you get you bring in Cousins who for all intents and purposes makes nobody excited, but you got to have him as a starter. Right. So, and that's one of those things like with those quarterback, like in season, you're, you can trade, you got to find a quarterback, the team that needs a quarterback the most and give them cousins and get back as much as you can. Um, right. But cause Daniel Jones is younger and he's ready to roll with you. you Daniel Jones and Trevor Lawrence, that doesn't look like a bad pair. And you add, you got cousins, Jimmy G and Lance, like you got a stacked quarterback. Right. You're room. able to, to yeah. do so much moving around and find something that somebody likes and be able right. to capitalize on it multiple different times. Exactly. And that the thing about like, if you, if you keep the pick and you make the pick, well, that's cool. Cause now you got Trevor Lawrence and whatever quarterback you want. I like but, shiny things too, Bo. But it, yeah, but it better be a good, you better be a good pick right? or else you you had the one, two and you blew it. Right. You know, and, and you can still, the, the thing about that co- young quarterback in super flex value, you're probably with those three quarterbacks, you're not going to Zach Wilson it. You're not going to, you're not going to torpedo the value of that pick in one year. They're not going to be that bad. You know, um, the two other quarterbacks are too poised to be Zach Wilson and Anthony, Anthony Richardson is the opposite of Zach Wilson. Um, he's, you know, Zach Wilson, when it's not right, he ain't running for nothing. He he no. might be he he I looked mean, like he could run at BYU against that <laughs> right. against college defenses, but he ain't running for nothing in the NFL. Kirk Cousins was QB seven and Daniel Jones was like QB eight on fantasy pros right now, looking through one through eighteen. Like both of those guys can put up fantasy play, points. Yeah, if you click points per game, they'll go down a little bit. But they played all eighteen games. They're start. They're right. like that's they didn't miss any games. So that Daniel Jones should show some growth. Cousins, you might not like it, but I mean he he'll average you fucking like eighteen points a game easy justin jefferson ain't getting 20 points a game from a nobody right i mean 25 points a game or he's not sexy but he can score points so that's what i'm saying daniel jones and kirk cousins are are, are, and now kirk cousins got hawkinson right well that's just i you guy you got to take that side for me personally so um it takes like it takes the fun out of the draft Sure. It's hard to make that decision. We're talking dynasty I'm trades right now. I'm fun in for more fun, though. Like no. I, I can have so much fun now trading in the season rather right. than just one day of fun in the fucking draft. Well said. It's so, <laughs> it's so hard to not take that pick in the draft and have so much fun doing it or seeing how much you can get from to go from pick 1-2 to 1-3 right. or seeing sure. how much you can get to go from pick 1-2 to 1-4 and stay in that quarterback range and just have so much fun you're probably not going to get that type of return 
we're getting starting quarterbacks. And Trey, well, Trey yeah. Lance gets traded in, and on draft day, value goes up immediately. Like if the Titans pick up Trey Lance or something, you know, like or the, somebody trades for Trey Lance on draft day, bang! You now you got you got like five quarterbacks that all are, are could are potential starters and have value. Jimmy G's got a little bit of value. I mean, it's not sexy, but somebody might need Jimmy G in the middle of the season. You got to trade Jimmy G before they get rid before they plug their starter into their. They draft. should probably trade Jimmy G before the draft, just in case they draft somebody. Not well, that's what I'm saying. If right, they right, if they right, are the, right, they're right. saying you know if they're the team that takes Richardson and puts him behind Jimmy G, that's what I was thinking about when I said something about Jimmy G maybe getting benched halfway through the season because everybody's got money. He's got that contract. He's got that guaranteed money. But if the Raiders aren't doing great and they have a top 10 rookie quarterback on the team, who cares what they pay Jimmy G? They're going to want to see their quarterback. All yeah. of a sudden, Jimmy G's benched again. What yeah. a big, big <laughs> you know, paycheck. Handsome as gold get up. <laughs> All right. Let's move it to uh, a, a, an email trade from from our guy, Andrew. Appreciate all the all the love and comments on the videos, bud. So... Um, he's interested in our thoughts. He just traded away Ayuk, Alec Pierce to get Ridley and Sutton. What are your thoughts on on something like that? He traded away Pierce and Ayuk to get Ridley and, and Sutton. Sutton. Have your Clemson boy at quarterback, so he wanted the stack. He's got Trevor Lawrence now tack, piled up with uh, Ridley. He's got Justin Jefferson, A.J. Brown, Pittman. Well, he gets, it, he gets him out of having two – Indy wide receivers. Sure. Um, you know, if Indy gets, if Indy two PPR format, two PPR, mm -hmm. two points per catch for the wide receivers. That's interesting. Never played two PPR. Uh, I don't, I don't, I know you said you sent the email, but I, I'm not pulling it up. Um, so the thing, the thing about it is there's, there's two pieces to this. One of them we just touched on an If the, if the IOC gets traded, and goes to somewhere where he's like all of a sudden can be called a target hog. I'm not as big of a, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of this trade for the Andrew side. Um, Cause you know, and, and that's to be, I'm saying this before we see Ridley play on the Jags, mm -hmm. you know, Ridley could come out there and be like, yo, Trevor made Zay, Zay Jones look like a beast last year. You know, Ridley could come out there and be like, look, Trevor and Doug Peterson made Christian Kirk, and Zay Jones look like studs, and here I am. I'm Calvin. Really, watch this. Hold my beer. Well, we know, you know we know Zay's can play, and we I, we know Christian Kirk is above average at least. Um, yeah, no doubt. But no, I, 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 didn't, I, think, I didn't mean to throw shape, but like I don't think either one of those are on Calvin Ridley's level. I think that's what Kirk I mean. That's what is, I was trying to say. Similar. Calvin Ridley had shown himself, and he had Matt Ryan doing it. You and know. Alec Pierce, as much as I like Alec Pierce, hadn't really done anything necessarily except flashes, for being big and athletic. Flashes. He made a catch. In, I uh, like him. He made but. a catch against the Raiders and, and really killed my uh, tur tournament hopes. With nobody it. likes Sutton right now for whatever reason because he just hasn't really Nobody likes for Sutton you. but me. Um, I like Sutton too. I mean. I, en I enjoy the Sutton side of that trade because it seems like you didn't pay much for him. Uh, the, the Pierce thing about it is, is he does have a lot of potential. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't mean to, you know, cobble him in with another white guy, but what if he were to trade? What if he turns into Adam Thielen, you know? Except he'd be a monster Adam Thielen. That's what I'm like, an a, a highly athletic yeah. Adam Thielen, a drafted Adam Thielen, you know? Hats off to the guy that got, um, you know, Adam Thielen undrafted, gets another paycheck. Like you said, you, you, you didn't get to see the wheels fell off of Indy. You didn't really get to see fair shake of what the hell was going on there. And I didn't expect a ton out of him anyway because he was a rookie, but he got a lot of playing time, right. which is what uh, uh, something that a lot of rookies can't even say. So he's got snaps. He's got, you know, reps with the first team offense. And he made some plays when the ball was thrown his way. I didn't, you know, I haven't watched a ton of Indy tape. I don't know. You know, I'm sure he made some mistakes. He's a rookie. But there's un, there's definitely potential with Pierce. Um, and there's not a lot of guys, you say this all the time, there's not a lot of guys in Indy to catch the ball. Mm -hmm. Just lost one of their really good ones that when he's healthy, and that's Paris Campbell. When he's healthy, pound for pound, one of the best receivers in the league. <laughs> I don't know if that's accurate. <laughs> PPR wise, he is. You look back at the, the games where he got targets this year. I mean, he cr it was only three games before he <laughs> went back out, but uh, he crushes when he's in there. Um, you know, like I said, if, if Ayuk gets traded, he's a target hog. It's tough, but it, before the season starts, without seeing Ridley on the Jags and what they plan to do with him, um, you know, you can't really paint a picture of too many guys that would have a bigger chip on their shoulder than Ridley right now. I mean, Ayuk's got the best value in the trade, but Ridley's not. Two maybe a round or two behind what what 
Ayuk has in startup value, or may, maybe possibly three. But you know, I, I, I'm I'm fine with it. I think Calvin Ridley easily could outscore Ayuk this year, and that, no doubt, most likely, if he's uh, on the Niners, if Sutton plays, Sutton. if Sutton plays and is healthy, he's going to outscore Alec Pierce. I mean, Sutton and, and could outscore. Older. Sutton could outscore anybody in the in the in uh, the trade for sure. If for sure. if things go, it's not uh, a sexy trade, but I, I like it for points in your lineup moving forward. I like those two players. Aya could be the is the best player if he was on another team getting targets. I think, but it really it really is. A, is he's not. It's right one now. of those like trading away Ayuk is a lot harder than it sounds. Sure, you know trading for him is not too. It's we all want and we see what Ayuk can. And if if you ask people that really know football, like Ayuk's one of the best route runners in the league. Mm-hmm. You know, and they they talk about what he can do. Like you said, he gets but he's always open. He just there. He's not going to be part of their plan. They're not scheming for him to get the ball. Sutton could be the stud in this trade. I don't mean to ha- you know hammer the Sutton every time I get a chance, but really, he 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 was a beast. He is a beast. He can be a beast. He can there's be a beast. Of some beast like stuff there. There's beastly flashes. So we'll see how this offense goes. And I like Judy a lot. I think he's. A, I like both these Denver guys. I don't know why they were trading him. I don't know what the hell was going on, but it seems like that that is kind of the ship is righted and they're both staying. So I I I I I genuinely think that I like what what you did. It's not fun. I don't think it's as easy as it sounds. That's to what get I'm rid saying. Of, it, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm, I'm it, piggybacking off of that for sure. To 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 bring in two guys that have enormous potential this year with you know Sutton and Ridley, they're none of they're both getting drafted later because we don't the expectations have been lowered. Haven't seen Ridley play football in a long time. I was just starting to talk about it. the chip on his shoulder. He had the mental issues that cost him games before he got suspended for a year, you know. And then he goes and and puts his thoughts on paper and says, "Hey, I'm you know I'm coming back." And I didn't read it, but apparently it must have been the right thing. Wrote the right thing because people are like, "Look, you know, this is worth the read." Of course, I didn't have the attention span to put <laughs> put nine minutes in it, but you know, for people to be promoting what Ridley said and said, "Hey, I'm you know." circle the wagons here on Ridley Um, it's probably going to turn out to be a good trade you do have that thing in the back of your mind where like all right Ayuk could go in the right spot and get in the right situation where he's a target hog and he can be he could be a stud but I you know I think I think Ridley could be scoring some fine points and and Sutton Sutton could be a beast too I like it as a as a winning a a move to try to to win right now Uh, I like it a, a good bit actually the more we talk about it Uh, All right, 